can you run when you don't know the way of the Spirit? Oak House Church brings to you the word of life which is able to build you up and offer you an inheritance among all those that are sanctified. Sit back and listen, and may your life become more like that of Christ as you encounter His Word. God bless you. I want to start by this. We are going to be dealing on how to lay the foundation of the Christian life. Laying the foundation of the Christian life. We have understood what the foundation is. True or false? I told you there is only one man approved of God. His name is Jesus Christ. The evidence is that he raised him up from the dead on the third day. He was crucified. He died and was buried on the third day. He rose from the dead. God raised him from the dead. There is no other man in any time, at any time in the history of creation that God has done that. The Bible says that he is the first begotten from the dead. No other person. That is the proof that God sent him. Number two is that God sent him with mighty miracles that no man on earth had ever done. Anybody that came from from wherever say that he's representing God, the evidence, there are two authentic evidence. Number one is notable miracle, mind-blowing, boggling miracle. Somebody died four days. He went there, he didn't start shouting and doing all those acrobatic whatever, or spending 39 hours of 20 hours speaking in tongues and all of that. He just went to the grave and shouted and screamed, said, Lazarus, come forth. And Lazarus came four days after his death. When they, we wanted to go, they said, wait, Jesus, by now, he stinks because he has been there for four days. He said, if you believe in me, he will rise again. I am the resurrection and I am life. <laughs> he did it. No case, no case, no situation that came to him that he didn't deal with. You read the scriptures, you read his account, he said he healed all, not some. And they were all instant there and then. He's a man approved of God. God raised him from the dead on the third day. So case closed. Without any controversy. Without controversy, great is a mystery of godliness. So if anybody is still arguing and doubting and cooking all kinds of cock and bull, whatever, that's your business. We have evidence. And that evidence is still alive today. You see, if you, if you understand, when you understand the gospel, when you understand this, thing, you will be fearless. You, it's not a question of uh, sitting down and, you know, discussing and arguing with people and all of We are not, the Bible even encourages not to stand or sit arguing about this or about that. Because they engender strife. There is a proof. The kingdom of God is not in words but in power and demonstration of the Spirit of God. <clears throat> okay, so having understood the foundation, who is the foundation of our Christian life or Christian faith, now we move on to laying that foundation, understanding how to lay that foundation. Before we, before we do that, let me say this. We have a relationship today with Christ and God. Okay? That relationship that we have with Jesus Christ and the Father is on the basis of covenant. It is important. That is why you have the Bible written in the in the covenant, the old covenant in the, and the new covenant. Don't, it's, it's important. With that covenant, you can't have anything to do with God. You must understand covenant. We are in covenant relationship. That word must be very heavy. You, as a matter of fact, you know, when I gave my life to Christ, that was the very first area that we had drilled, the area of covenant. 
understood what covenant is all about. But you see, as time goes on, because there are depths in the knowledge of God and all of that, you keep moving from one level of insight to the next level and all because God is so big and God is so deep and his word is unsearchable. Now, we have the new covenant and we have the old covenant. And one thing that you know about covenant is that covenant, every covenant, whether it's covenant with God or covenant with Satan, you know, people who are in all court societies, they call them secret what? Society. It's not only them that, that we also, God also is, has a secret society. God also has secret society because anything that has to do with covenant, they are secrets. It's not open to the public. Any covenant at all has secret with it or is called mystery. Covenant has mystery, things that are not readily known to man. There are depths inside it. So until you are brought into that clique, until you are initiated into it, you will not have access to the secrets of that society. There are sacrifices and a whole lot of things that go on with covenant. In Psalm 25 verse 14, and I read, he said, the secret of the Lord is with them that do what? That fear him. There are secrets. God has secrets. He said, the secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. So that is why we have the new covenant and the old covenant. Each and every one of them are secrets. It's not open. Just like you don't just walk outside and pick gold on the surface. For you to get gold, you have to dig. There is a liquid gold, which is called, when they call it, oil. You don't find oil on the surface. You dig. Is hidden. Jesus was giving a parable. He said, the, the kingdom of God is like a treasure hidden in a field. It's not open to everybody. There are depths and realms with God. And so God is saying here, look at this scripture. What he's saying here is that for you to have access to the depths, to the secret of God, to, for you to have access to God, and to know God and to have everything that God has designed for mankind so that God can reveal them to you and all of that. You have to be a man or a woman that do what? Fear God. If you don't have that fear of God, you cannot have access to those secrets. Now the question is, what does it mean in this context? What does it mean to fear God? What he's saying here is that Every covenant that you have, for you to be a member of that covenant party, for you to be a member of that secret court, you have to be initiated, okay? There is an initiation that has to take place. I don't think, I have not seen any secret society or any secret organization that somebody wants to enter whether it is that of God or that of the devil or whatever it is called, you just go there that very day and you just get initiated and you become a member of that secret court and they open up the secrets to you. I can't remember if there is anyone like that. So what I'm saying is, is that there are processes, there are stages of that initiation. So God is saying here is that those of them who follow carefully the laid down rules of that initiation, when you follow the rules, the pattern, and get initiated into that call, then the secret will now be made known to you. So what it means is that there are many people who have come into that secret society but they have no they don't have access here they are not even a members of that secret court so they don't have access they don't know and that is why when you preach the gospel when you speak and you teach you do all that it will enter this year you goes away from the other year because they don't know it they don't have understanding they don't know what you are talking about that is what he's saying so we have so many people who are hanging around the kingdom just like that man, Jesus Christ said, you are not far from the kingdom. The man is not far, but he's not inside the kingdom. He's not in the kingdom. He's still far. He's not, he's not with him. He's still with him. And there are so many people like that. We take these things, you know, as if they don't matter. 
And until you do it and have an understanding of what you are doing, you still will not have access to it. And God, because as we are going to see, I'm going to show you, read scriptures for you. Just get ready because we are going to open the Bible. Until anything is understood, it will still remain fairy tales to you. The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. To them that fear him, he opens up, he reveals his covenant. And so, the question now is, what are the stages or the processes of that initiation into the secret of God, into the secret court? Anything that has to do with covenant has secrets. The same thing the Bible says concerning marriage. Marriage is a covenant and is a mystery. It has secrets. If you don't enter into the marriage relationship or the marriage covenant in accordance to the laid down rules, the blessing, the secret of that covenant relationship will not be made known to you. It will not be revealed to you. All you are going to end up having is the physical aspect of that relationship. The depth you will not assess. The Bible says, Mary, um, uh, he that findeth a man findeth a good thing and obtained favor of the Lord. That grace will be elusive. The same way it will be elusive to anyone who claims to be a member of that secret call, which is of God, or a member of the household of God. You want to come into the kingdom of God. You want to become a member of the household of faith. You want to become a member of the family of God. There are processes you are going to go. There are stages, my brothers. You don't take it for granted. I'm going to show you. The first is that you must be born again. The second is that you must be baptized in the water. The third is that you must be baptized in the Holy Ghost. The fourth is that you must be a partaker of the body and the blood of Jesus Christ. How many things did I mention? You are going to see something that Jesus Christ said. Each and every one of these stages, he made a very strong declaration. As a matter of fact, he swore when he made those statements. Number one, he found it in the book of John chapter 3, verse 3. What did he say here? And Jesus, Jesus answered and said unto him, what? He said what? What did he say? Read it. Verily, verily. Jesus is the one speaking here. He said, verily, verily. And all the, these four stages were altered by the mouth of Jesus Christ. Not any other. He didn't delegate it to another person to speak. He was the one that declared it by himself. And in this case, he said, verily, verily. You know the word verily? is like, I swear. Solemnly swear. That except a man be born again. He cannot do what he swore. Number two, baptized in the water. Give me verse five. See, verily, verily. Verse five. And Jesus answered and did what? Verily, verily. I say unto thee, except a man be born of what? Water and of the spirit. Verily, verily. Except you are born of water and of the spirit, you cannot enter. How many of them now is remaining one? John chapter 6, verse 53. John 6, 53. Uh, then Jesus said unto them, what again? What did he say? Verily, verily, I say unto you, except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Is war. Are there people today who are, there are so many people who claim to be born again and all of that, but are not born? We're going to see about being born again. Are there people who have not been baptized in water? I mean, there are some who are sprinkled water when they were very small and all. Is there, are they going to enter the kingdom of God? Are they going to enter the kingdom of God? The answer is no, because I'm not the one that said it. Look at it, it's written. That's why every statement I make, I'm going to open the scriptures and show you. 
is to so that you understand the reason why Christianity is so difficult for people to live. You can't live a Christian life on the basis of your own strength. You can't. They tried to do that in the Old Testament. They couldn't keep the laws. They couldn't keep the commandment. Before they know it, they broke it. They gave Moses, he broke it on coming down from the mountain. You can't. You don't have that ability. Except God gives you that ability. And except you are born again, you don't have that ability. Now, let us look at 1 Corinthians chapter 10. These four experiences, this Old Testament sense, they had that experience. They went through all these four processes. Because you see, everything, that is why I said everything, you, if you don't understand the New Testament and you go to the Old, you are going to be making a lot of errors. And when you read it, you won't understand it. Because everything is pointing to Christ. Until you understand the new, you can't understand the old. The new is the key to the old. I show you the other time on Monday when they concentrate on the old covenant and they are reading about laws and Moses and the prophet and he said the veil was still on their face. But when they turn to the Lord, that veil is lifted. Now, see, moreover, brethren, I will not that you should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the watch. Now, you remember that they were in Egypt for 430 years in bondage and God delivered them from Egypt to where? To the promised land. The promised land is a type and shadow of heaven because that is the final bus stop. The Egypt is like the world, those of them who were in the world. So delivering them from Egypt is a type of being being what? Delivering them or setting them free from the Egyptian bondage for 430 years is, uh, is like being born again. Is that clear? So these ones, they have been delivered from Egypt. Born again, type and shadow. Okay? How would, I would not that you should be ignorant. How that all our fathers were under the cloud. You remember the pillar of cloud fire is a type of Holy Spirit baptism. You remember in the night, the pillar of fire, they were under it. They were under the pillar of fire. Is a kind of, is a type of Holy Spirit baptism. Is a type and shadow. And that's what exactly the Bible is pointing out here to, for us. He said, how that our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the what? The sea, that sea they pass through is like what? The water baptism. All of them. Verse 2. And we are all baptized unto Moses in the what? You see, baptized unto Moses in that cloud and in the sea. You see the baptism. Okay. Verse 3. And did all eat the same spiritual what? Meat which is like what? The body of Jesus Christ. Okay? Verse 4. And did all drink the same spiritual drink, which is like what? The blood of Jesus Christ. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was what? Christ. You see these same four experiences. That Jesus Christ talked about. They all went through it. Now, you, when you come to the New Testament, this is the Old Testament experience. When you come to the New Testament, you see the same pattern. Give me Acts of Apostles chapter 2 verse. Give me 36. It was the gospel that Peter was preaching. If you go back, go, go, go back to maybe 35, uh, 32 or thereabout, just go. So I can read a couple of, therefore being by the right hand of God exalted and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he has shed forth this which you now see and hear. Verse 36. He said, for David is not ascended into the heaven, but said to himself, or said himself, the Lord said unto my Lord, sit thou at my right hand. Until I make thy foes thy foes too. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God had made that same Jesus, whom you have crucified, both Lord and Christ. He was preaching sound gospel. And so, 
Now, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? And Peter answered them in verse 30. He said, Peter said unto them, repent. That is, be born again. Is that? And be what? Baptized in the water. Number two. And every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ. You baptize in the name of the, Jesus Christ. For the remission of sins. So being born again and baptism in the water is for the remission, forgiveness of sin. Nothing more. For the remission of sin. And you shall receive what? The gift of the Holy Spirit. How many of them now? Three. The fourth one. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Verse 40. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourself from this outward generation. Verse 41. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized. And that same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Verse 42. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship in doing what? And that is what? When you talk about breaking of bread, they break bread, they drank. You see those four experiences. So we see them mentioned by Jesus Christ and he used the word verily, verily. We see it all happen in all the lives of the Old Testament saints that left Egypt. Number two, we see the same experience in the New Testament sense, they follow the same pattern, the Acts of Apostles. They follow that same pattern. You can't change it. I'm going to give you the final one. Look at the life of Jesus Christ himself. Give me Colossians 1.18. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the first born from where? Was Jesus Christ born again? Was he born again? Was he born again? You are not sure. He said he was, he is the first. Who is the beginning? The firstborn from where? He died. He was made sin. He who knew no sin was made sin. He died. He was born again. Without being born again, you can't access the kingdom of God. You can't enter. Jesus is a perfect example. He said, look unto me as the author and finisher of your faith. Give me Revelation chapter Revelation chapter 1 verse 5. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first, what? Begotten from the dead. So you see, Jesus Christ was born again. Let me tell you something. Yeah? Jesus Christ is a perfect example. Anything that you do not see in him, you cannot become it. If Jesus Christ ascended to heaven, it means you can ascend to heaven. It means there is something that called, there is nothing, no word for rapture. Rapture means, is an Hebrew word, a Greek word rather, that means cut up. So people borrow that word because it fits into the description. So they are often using the word rapture. So when you go out telling people that it's going to be rapture, they will confront you and tell you that you are a liar. There is nothing like rapture in the Bible. What the Bible talks about is cut up. If you check the Greek word for cut up, it talks about rapture, okay? So, if Jesus Christ was raptured, it means you're going to rapture. He rose again from the dead. It means you're going to, if you die, you will raise from the dead. If he is born again, it means you are going to be born again. If he is glorified, it means that you are going to be what? Glorified. God glorified him. It means you're going to be glorified. Everything you see in the life of Jesus Christ, that is a prototype. So, number one, we see Jesus Christ was born again. Number two, he was baptized inside the water. Matthew chapter 3, verse 13. And then come Jesus from Galilee unto Jordan, unto John, to be what? To be baptized of him. Okay? Verse 14. And there was an argument between John and Jesus Christ. But John forbade him, saying, I have no need to be baptized of thee, and comest thou to me. There was no need because he was the righteousness of God in Christ. The meaning of that, the importance of that baptism, I'm going to explain to you later. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Suffer ye to be so for now, for thus is becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then 
he suffered in God. Do you know what it means to fulfill all right? The requirement for righteousness. There is what the Bible calls in the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 3. Righteous requirement. Those requirements, there are four requirements before you become that. And that is what he is telling us. That is what Jesus Christ came to demonstrate for us as a prototype. And Jesus answering and said unto him, Suffer it to be so now. For thus, the word thus is do it this way. For thus, it is becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. All the righteousness, the things that God has set in place that we must do. Then he suffered him. Verse 16. And Jesus, when he was what? Baptized. He was baptized in water. Went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heaven were open unto him, and he saw the Spirit descending like a dove and alighting upon him. That is what? The Holy Spirit baptism. How many did he do now? He was born again. He was baptized in water. He was baptized in the Holy Spirit. Number four, he partake of the bread and the wine. Give me Matthew chapter 26, verse 26. They were eating. Jesus took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take it. This is my body. Verse 27. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Have I made my point clear? You know why I'm spending time to open up this and show you from the scriptures? If you don't do that, if you have not done that, the secret... The things of God will just be hovering over your head. You talk and talk and talk. The thing is, is not entering. The word of God is coded. There is a seal. It's not open. It's, that is why he said, ever learning. And they never come to the knowledge of truth. We have a lot of them in the body of Christ. And when they read the word, the Bible and all of them, they turn it upside down. Misinterpreting it and misjudging it and all of that. No matter the kind of follow-up you do with these people, they can never be saved. You are wasting your energy and all of that. The reason is because they are never born again. Now, let's go back. What actually happens at New Bed when somebody gave his life to Christ? So what actually happened? What's the significance? Now, we look at Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 26. A new heart. Look at what happens at new birth. Look at what happens to you. He says, A new heart also will I give you. A new what? And a new what? Spirit. I will give you a new heart. I will give you a new spirit. Number three. I will take away what? I will take away what? The stony heart away. That stubborn, stony heart, rebellious heart that never wanted to listen and obey God and follow God and serve God, that rebellious heart. He will take that heart away, that stony heart that is corrupt, is dirty and stinking and smelly. God said, I will take that heart away out of your flesh and I will give you an heart of what? Flesh. What is a heart? Heart is a dwelling place for your spirit man. Heart is a tabernacle, is a house where the, where the spirit man lives. The heart is not the spirit. He said, because I will give you a heart of flesh. The heart is where the, the heart is where the spirit man is living. The heart is a house. Give me um, Matthew chapter 9, verse 16. He said, No man put it a piece of cloth unto an old garment. For that which is put in to fill it off, take it from the garment, and the rent is made what was. You know what he's saying? If you have an old cloth now that is torn, hmm? you want to patch it, you want to mend it, you go and bring, you know, a, a cloth that is worn out, is old, is worn out. 
you bring a new cloth now and you want to use it to patch it. What, will, what do you think will happen to that cloth after sewing it and patching it? It will be worse than it was before. It will take just as a slide because the new one is going to tear it. That's what he said. And then he said again, no man put a piece of new cloth onto an old garment for that which is put into it to fill it up. Take it from the garment and the rent is made worse. Verse 17. Neither do men put new wine into old bottles, else the bottles break and the wine runneth out and the bottles perish. But they put new wine into new what? Bottles and both are what? Preserved. The old heart that is corrupt, that is stony and rebellious, you cannot put a new spirit inside it because there will be destruction. It won't work. So in order for God to do a good job, you know what he did? He takes away the old heart and puts a new heart and puts a new spirit. And then he puts your spirit inside. And then he puts the Holy Spirit inside. A new heart is a house where the spirit lives. And a new heart is also where the Holy Spirit lives. The Holy Spirit lives in the heart. That's why the Bible said that we are the temple. Your heart is the altar. My altar is crying and calling upon God. The altar of your heart. That's where the Holy Spirit is. That's where your, your spirit man is. You see what happens? Now, at this junction, at this particular point, eternal life has not entered. But what happens is that your sins are forgiven. You are now, your sins are forgiven you and all of that. That is even the reason why God now steps in to remove your, he has forgiven your sin and then he removes your old heart and gives you a new heart and puts you in, gives you a new spirit of yours that was corrupt and damaged. And then he puts his Holy Spirit all inside your heart. You become a new creation. That's what happens at new birth. It's from the scriptures that I'm reading to you and showing you. James chapter 4 verse 5. So you see, do you think that the scripture said in vain, the spirit that dwelleth in us lost it to envy. See, the spirit is living. Your spirit is talking about your spirit, the human spirit. The new spirit now is living inside of you. So he gives you, what happens at new birth is that your old heart is taken away. A new heart is given you. Your old spirit was taken away. A new spirit was given you. That's why you are a brand new man. In other words, he restores you like Adam before he sinned. Before Adam committed sin, that upon high treason. Before that, Adam, Adam did not have eternal life. He didn't. He had a pure spirit that is uncorrupted. Now, what is the second one? Then when he puts the Holy Spirit inside of you, what is the implication? When the Holy Spirit comes inside. I know there are so many other things that the Holy Spirit does. But see, the, I'm talking about what happens uh, within that new birth. That concerning the initiation into the kingdom of God. Into the family of God. So that you become a member of the household of God. You need to understand what goes on. Or what happened. Now, the next thing is that that baptism. The baptism in the Holy Spirit is not necessarily... Speaking in tongues. But speaking in tongues is part of it. But the basic first, before you talk about any other thing, is that through the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you are initiated into the family. You become a member. It's the Holy Spirit that makes you a member of the family of God. Without him, you cannot. Give me First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 13. For by one spirit, are we all what? Are we all done what? baptized into into what? How many bodies? One body. He brought us all together into one body. He made us become one. You see, that is one of the essence of being baptized in the Holy Ghost. Is that that baptism, the Holy Spirit introduces you into the family and you are now registered. That's when your name is now written in the book of life. You are now a member of the family of God. Your name is written in heaven at the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Because by that, you are baptized into the body. You are officially recognized as a member of the household of faith. Then, when you have entered, become a member, they give you a seal. 
a mark of ownership. Give me Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13, 13 and 14. In whom you also trusted after that you, are, you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. In whom also after that you believed, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of what? Promise. After you believed, you were sealed. You have a mark of ownership. You see the processes. You see what goes on in that process of initiation. They are all written in the scriptures, in the Bible. Eternal life has not come in yet. Then, he now said, because all these four processes, Jesus Christ, he said, I swear to you, is not a light matter. The fourth one, which is the endness of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. Yeah, somebody is maybe asking. Let me explain what it means. You know, when you go to the market now, that, um, what's the name of that your car, Matilda? What's the name again? Ford. You now went to buy it and they tell you the price is 3.5 million. You deposited 3 million as a down payment. The person, the, the man that is selling the car drives it and parks it somewhere. Nobody can come and buy it because you have made a deposit, a reasonable deposit. 3 million out of 3.5 million is as good as your own. So he keeps it for you until you have finally come and make the balance payment. And then you can take the car. What is the deposit? Is the Holy Spirit to assure us that he's coming back to make us complete. And what is it that is going to complete in us? To change this, our mortal body into immortal body. That is mortality will be swallowed up in, by what? Immortality. So that inside out, you become fully like Jesus Christ. That's what he's talking about here. Is that okay? Now, let's go to communion. John 6, 53. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. What kind of life? Verse 54. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood had what? See when eternal life comes. Eateth my body and drinketh my blood. Had what? Eternal life and I will raise him up at the last day. So the condition for raising you up at the last day is because you have eternal life. I want you to notice something. What is the word eateth? What is the, the contemporary language or word for it? Eateth means what? Is a continuous, is a continuation, is continual, is it not? And look at drink, drink it, my blood. What does it mean? You continue to, in other words, he that eats and drinks does what? Have eternal life. In First Corinthians 11, from 26, he says, as often as you eat and drink, that is you continue eating and drinking. Why? Eternal life. This eternal life you have finally received. Remember, I want to show you something. Jesus said, I am the vine and you are what? The branch. He said, except you, the branch abides in me. You don't have life. But if you abide in me, you will bring forth fruit. So, the condition for continuing to live, expressed in this eternal life, is that you are abiding in Christ. How? Have you seen a branch on a tree that is dry? Have you seen one? The life does not flow from the tree or from the trunk or from the vine to the branch. There is a cessation of life. Something happened. So, in other words, 
eternal life you have received is not a is not an independent life is not independent you must have to be sustained in needs sustenance because you are carrying this in an earthen vessel in order to sustain it and keep it going you need to keep close contact relationship with jesus one of the ways you maintain that relationship and he tells us is through the partaking of the bread and the wine. And when you read the Acts of the Apostles, you see this was their regular practice. In 1 Corinthians chapter 16, when you read it, they said, from there, I was reading it, I found out that they, could do, they couldn't do it every day again, but the Bible says they break bread on the Lord's day. That is every Sunday they meet, they take communion. Every Sunday they meet, they take communion. Every Sunday they meet, they take communion. For sustenance of that life. So you see, eating of the bread and the wine gives you access to eternal life. And then you continue to do it. You continue to. That's why the Bible said in 2 Corinthians 4, 16, it says, Though our outward man perishes, our inward man is renewed. How? By this. These are practices that we are ordained by God. And he said, verily, verily, I say. This is how you ensure the life of the vine continue to flow through you. And it will sustain you. Another thing that the life of the vine does when you do it, you find it in the Second Corinthians 4, 16. He said, For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perisheth, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Okay? So let's look at John 6, 57. He said, And the living Father, had, as the living Father had sent me, I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even he shall do what? live by me. What does it mean? The ability to express the life of God in you. That eternal life. The ability to sustain you and live that life. The power. As many as received him to them, he gave power to become, to live that life. The energy of the spirit that you need to live that life is being injected inside of you. Remember all these things is by revelation, by knowledge. Because what you don't know, you cannot take advantage of it. When you hear Caleb in the Old Testament and say to Joshua, he said, give me my own portion of the land as you was promised me by Moses. He was talking to him at the age of 80. He said, Moses made that promise when I was 40. Even though I am 80 right now, my strength is as though I was still 40. Why? There is something they were doing. There is something they were doing. It's just like somebody said, um, um, Isaac, Isaac sowed in the dry land and all of that during the whatever, and they had hundredfold. There was something that he was doing. He dug the ground. Water came. There is something they were doing. But they were doing it with knowledge, with under they know what is involved, and so they got doing it. You see what understanding does. When you are doing something without understanding and all of that, you it won't profit you much. And even when you have a breakthrough in that area, you can't continue it. You can't continue sustaining because you don't know what you were doing. Because it is like somebody is just trying to press buttons and all of it. You don't know which one. This gadget is too much. You don't know which one. There was one gadget one day was just fiddling with the buttons. I don't know which one is which. How to put on the light. I was looking at it. I mistakenly pressed one button and light came out. Okay, put off the light. I didn't know the button that I pressed. So when I tried and tried, I didn't succeed. I left it on and left. That is, you bumped into success. But when you understand the functionalities, what these buttons are for, and all, you, know, you just come and do it. You just press the button. When you are done, you press the other one. What light goes up. Okay, so he says, 
As the Father has sent me, I live by the Father, so he that eateth me shall live by me. I mentioned there are three things partaking of the body of Jesus Christ offers you. Number one is eternal life. Number two is that he gives you, he is able to sustain you. Even though your outward man is perishing, your inward man is renewed. And it will keep sustaining you until the purpose and plans of God for your life is accomplished, is complete, and then you can now go. Nothing will happen to you until that day. So I will say you, there are secrets. There are things that these people were doing. All this thing that I'm telling is revelation. There are secrets of the kingdom, the mysteries, which is not open to those who do not enter into that covenant according to the rules or specification that God said. You won't have access to it. And even when we are teaching it, even when we are opening, opening them up, you are sitting down here, you have not been initiated. It will be flying from one head over across your head. You won't understand anything. After the end of the day, you say you don't understand what it is. It's like cock and bull story to you. It's gibberish. You can't make any meaning out of it. So you walk away. The third thing that the blood of Jesus or the body of Jesus and the blood of Jesus Christ offers us is that shared life. Our lives are shared. Because it's one life. Oh. It's one life. What he's telling you is so that you can understand the connection between you and we are blood brothers. Is very, very important. We are united, we are one, we are not two. If you talk anything that touches you has that is that's the meaning. If because if you don't understand this, you are going to have problems. Now that you have been initiated, now that you are a member of the same body, give me Ephesians chapter 4, verse. One, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation where which you are called. Verse 2 with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in, in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Endeavor to keep the unity of the spirit in the body. This is of utmost importance. This is actually what is killing a lot of people who have finally been initiated the right way. And he's telling us the danger of trying to misbehave why we have been initiated into the kingdom and we become members of the same household and become members of the family of God and all of that and in the kingdom you don't play games with your brothers or with your sisters if you do it's going to backfire big time that you have received eternal life is not a guarantee that you are going to make heaven it's a promise given to you there is an everlasting life to live let me pause here and talk about the everlasting life. Genesis chapter 3 verse 22. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us to do what? To know good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and do what? And live forever. After the fall of man, when he has sinned against God, God forbade him from eating of the tree of life. He said, because if he eats of it, man will live forever. He will not be redeemed again. He will remain in that state. He will not be able to redeem man. He will live forever and ever. That is everlasting life in the negative. Nobody has access to that tree of life till today. Give me Revelation chapter 22. Give me verse 14. Blessed are they that do his commandments that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. Have you entered into that city? Have you entered into that city? No. 
those of them who obey his commandment, who do his commandment, they are the ones that will have access to the tree of life, that they may enter into the gate and out, go in and out. Those of them who have eaten of the tree of life, they will no longer die. They will live forever. They will be like God, incorruptible forever, everlasting life. Nothing can remove it. Nothing can stop it. If you eat of that tree of life, let me show you Revelation chapter 2 verse 7. He that had an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said unto the churches. To him that overcome it will I give to eat. What? Until you overcome, you will not have access to the tree of life. Have you eaten of the tree of life? No. It's when you get over there. If you overcome, he will give you to eat of the tree of life, which is in what? In the midst of the paradise of God. That same place where that tree of life was, when Adam it was in the paradise. So you see, what happens when you partake of the body and drink of the blood? Access to eternal life. You, you number one, you have access to that. You eternal life enters. And then you continue for sustenance. For sustainability. So that it will continue. You keep exposing yourself as you behold him with an open face as in, a, as in a mirror. The same way as you partake of that communion, often, as often as you eat and drink, that life wells up from within you. Number three, we talk about shared life. You should know that as we are eating, he say is one body. We are eating one, but we are not eating different body. Is one. The Jesus Christ is one body. The church is one body. We are not different body. You so anything that you do when you you play pranks, when you think you are too smart, when you are think when you think you are, I just don't know. You know some people and they are Christians and they are born again. And you are playing games with God and all of that. You, the faster, you know what you do with these people? If you want to destroy their lives, just come, share communion, all of them, let them eat. I won't bother you. Keep stealing and keep doing whatever. You can be backbiting and stabbing me at the back and all of that. I won't have any problem with you. I'll just come and we serve communion. Keep eating it. That's the fastest way to finish you. Because that's what the Bible says. When you talk about not discerning the laws, I have listened to so many people talk about discerning the laws, but they say it's not this one. It's discerning the laws, but it's uh, maintaining the, the gospel so that you don't uh, preach. Um, and all. That's not what he's saying. The, the, the lost body, the lost body is made up of human beings, you and I. Discerning the lost body is to be careful how you deal with your brother and your sister. He said, because of this, he said, let him that eat, before you eat, let him eat wordly, not unwordly. Be worthy of that bread you are eating. Because if you are not worthy, if you do not descend the Lord's body, the consequences is a lot. You can't afford it. Give me First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 16. The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not the communion of the body, of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? He said, for we being many are one bread and one body. For we are all partakers of that one bread. He keeps writing about it. Go to verse 18. He said, Behold, Israel, after the flesh, are not they which eat of the sacrifice, partakers of the altar? What say I then that the idol is anything, or that which is offered in sacrifice to idol is anything? No. But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to the devils and not to God. And I will not that you should have fellowship with devils. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of the devils. You cannot partake of the Lord's table and of the table of the devils. Many are doing this. That's one of the reasons. That is one of the meaning of not discerning the Lord's body. They are doing a festival. 
you are doing um, uh, Idel Malud, Idel Shekiri, Idel, Idel, whatever they call them. All those fetish. And because you are their friends, they make sacrifices, they call upon their God. Because there is only one God. And there is only one way you can approach that God. They are not calling the same God that you and I are calling. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come to the Father except through me. So which God are they calling? They have not received him as their Savior and as their Lord. So which God are they calling? There is something else they are doing that you don't know. And so when they do all those, their incantations and all of that, and did their, their whatever, and they offer all those, and they invite you and they serve you, and you eat and you drink. He says, yes, I know there is only one God. There are no two gods. And that is your faith. However, you cannot go and be partaking of those things. And all. Are you trying to provoke God to jealousy? Are you stronger than him? He said, but however, if you go to the shambles or to the market to buy meat, you don't go and be asking whether this one was offered to. Because there are so many things they do and bring it to the market. Oh, you don't think so? You don't think so? Hey, oh my God, oh my. You don't know the problem that people are facing in this life. You don't know the Bible said that this world, we know that this world lies in wickedness. If you see the wickedness of man, if you see what people are doing in this life, some of them you eat. Your destinies are gone and all of that. Some they do all kinds of incantation and all kinds of whatever they brew it and conjure all sorts and send it to the market. They're vulnerable, they will eat it, and their life is destroyed. They use them for sacrifices and rituals. Out there, even the clothes and food and all of that you buy. But the Bible says when you go to the market to buy, you don't go and be asking people hey, whether um, is this one from India? Did they, what, how did you, are you born again in the first place? You keep asking all those people. He said, no. He said, because when you sanctify it with the word of God and prayer, it is there. You can go ahead and eat it. Nothing will happen. So that's what we do. That's what I do. I've told you, number one, to enter into the kingdom. Jesus Christ is my covenant. You don't just wish yourself into it. There are secrets. It's not open to every dick and hurry. Even heaven is coded. The word of God itself, he said there is a seal. You are reading it, you can't make anything out of it. Jesus said to them, it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom. There are mysteries. It's not for everybody. That's why it's coded. It's a secret. But the ones that have access to this secret are those who have been initiated properly. And I said to be initiated the right way. There are four stages of that initiation. The first one, you see Jesus mentioned it and he made a declaration. Verily, verily, you must be born again. Verily, verily, you must be born of water. Verily, verily, you must be born of the spirit. Verily, verily, you must be partaker of the body and the blood of Jesus Christ. You see it in the life of all the Old Testament. You see it practiced in the New Testament. You see the life of Jesus Christ do the same thing. And I explain to you what happened at New Birth. What actually happened is a time when your heart, your whole stubborn heart and all of that is taken away. Then they give you a new heart. Put a new spirit in you. Your new spirit. And then God puts his Holy Spirit inside of you cannot put a new spirit in an old heart. It will be messy. So you have to remove the old heart, put a new heart, and then bring new spirit. That's what is called new creation. If any man is in Christ, he's a new creation. Everything has become new. You begin to love God. That original heart that Adam had, that loves God and don't love that, that is a heart. And then he gives you the Holy Spirit. And then after that, the next thing that happens is that you go for water baptism. What is the essence 
of the baptism. Because we look at baptism as, you know, sometimes you, you just, you, you, some of us think it's a form or it's fun. You just dump, get into water and then you come out. It's not funny. It's not a form. There is a mystery. You are demonstrating your death. You are identifying with the death. It's an identification with Christ in his death. He said, he that is dead. You, if you are dead, you are no longer hold bound by those life, old lifestyles. Those old lifestyles, what it means is that you have buried them. They don't have power over you anymore. You cannot be subject to it anymore. You cannot be held bound. The power of it has been broken. You can't be in bondage of any kind of life that is not of God. And say, I'm always lying. I, can't, I don't know how to get out of it. Oh, I'm a stain smoker. Don't. If you are born again, it can't happen to you. If it happens, it's because you allowed it. If it happens, it's because there is something you have gone back to your vomit. Demons that have been harassing you will not. Before you gave your life to Christ, demons have been harassing you and all of that. And all those, and there are certain, you know, traits that goes on in your family at a very particular month or particular year and all of that. Or a certain age in your family, something happens and stuff like that. And uh, it's as a result of entanglement that have been made in the past through your fathers and your forefathers and all that. You'll be running in your family. But what happens is that the moment you get saved, you go into the water. What you are saying is that now I am dead. Everything that came with this old life and the consequences of it and everything is gone. And then you come out of that life, of that water, that is resurrection unto a new life. A life now of righteousness. A life of holiness. That's the meaning of that. That's what it means. So you see, no matter, listen to me, listen, listen good. I don't care. There is no habit that you say that I'm used to have done it, whatever. If I, the only reason is that because I like it, that's why I am doing it. He said, I'm struggling to give it up and all of that. It's a lie. It's because you wanted it. One thing that I used to put myself to test, before I came out and said it, I made up myself, because I have, done, I have experienced this over time. I said I can never be in bondage of anything. Nothing. Of any lifestyle or whatever. I can't. He says, see, and you being dead in your sin and the uncircumcision of your flesh, had he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, buried with him, where? In baptism. Buried with him in baptism. Wherein also you are risen with him, through the faith of the operation of God is by faith of the operation of God you did it. Who had raised him from the dead? Verse 13. And you being dead in your sin and the uncircumcision of your flesh had he quickened together with him having forgiven all what? All what? The one that the, you made with your fathers and with your grandfather, were they included in the things he forgave? Were they included? So why are they still following them? Why is he still running in their family? Lack of knowledge. My people are destroyed because they lack knowledge. His knowledge, they lack. His knowledge, they lack nothing more, nothing less. So you call this minister, you go to the village, you do deliverance and then you come back again, you do another one, you do deliverance. The only thing that will bring you back to that same consequences that your fathers and your people are suffering is that if you go back and make practice of those things again, you will be ensnared. But as long as you keep yourself clean from them, the wicked one will not touch you. 
That's what the Bible says. And you being dead in your sin and all circumcision of your flesh, had he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all your trespasses? Verse 14. Blotting out what? Handwriting of what? Ordinances that was against who? Us. Which was contrary to what? To us. And took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. And having spoiled principalities and powers and all of that, he nailed them to his cross. Every one of them, from the beginning to the end, that is what you demonstrated when you went inside the water and you come out again. It's over. It's in the past. If any man is in Christ now, I'm a new creation. I'm a new creation, a brand new man. All things are passed away. I'm born again. More than a conqueror. That's what I am. I'm a new creation, a brand new man. I'm a brand new man. The reason is because of what Jesus Christ did for me. That is the meaning of the baptism. And I told you the implication also, being born again, what it means, the new birth. What is the implication of that water baptism? The implication of the Holy Spirit baptism, the implication of the communion and finally, there is one aspect I want to clean up there are some of you here who are not born again you may be here, you are not born nothing, I mean in this hall there are some who are not born again, you may have all come out here and say Jesus, Jesus come into my life, come into my life and be my Lord is a lie you first of all receive him before he becomes your Lord. Even me, I'm struggling in, the, in my surrendering my life so that he will be my Lord. After all these years, I'm still walking. If you are going to be born again, these things must happen. If they don't happen, you are not born again. Give me Romans chapter 10 verse 12. Okay, let's start from 10. Romans 12, 10. Please, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture said, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How? Are there many people who are calling upon the name of the Lord? Are there? How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not done what? Heard. And how shall they hear without a preacher? You see, so first of all, there is going to be what? A preacher. Someone must preach. This is the pattern it must happen. It might not be preaching from the pulpit like this. It might be something that you have heard through the television broadcast or somebody or through MSP or through whatever. Somebody is going on evangelism. He shared the word of God and all of that. In the preaching, the seed is being sown. Through preaching, the seed of the word of God is being sown. And that word, that seed that is sown, that person sowed that seed and walks away. The sower went to sow seed. Some of the seed fell on the pathway. Some on the stony ground. Some on the stony ground. Some on the good soil. It's the preaching that brings the seed. In preaching, you sow the seed into the heart of the people. Then the second thing that must happen is that you must hear. If you don't hear, it will not happen. Because the connection between God and you to bring about the miracle that you need in any area of your life is that you must listen. So when you come to church, you see people who are walking up and down, who are sitting down, they are giggling, they are looking at their phones and they are discussing and saying all things. Their mind and their intellect and their attention is not there. If you don't hear, there is no way you can have faith. Because the Bible calls it the hearing of faith. If you don't pay attention to hear, 
What is the purpose of hearing? The hearing will give you the understanding. If you don't hear, this one thing for you to hear is another thing for you to understand. If you do not understand, it will not happen. You can never be saved. I'm going to give you scriptures. It is when you hear, you now understand because you now understand what he said. You now believe. Is it not? You now can believe it. And belief is an action word. It's a verb. Belief means to put it into action. And what is that action? You make a confession. With a heart, man believes it. And with a mouth, confession is made. This process must go on. If it does not go on, you cannot. You must hear the gospel. And the type of gospel you must hear is the gospel of salvation. If you don't hear it, you will not be saved. Until you hear it, you may not hear it. They may preach it and make altar call here and all of that. And you come out, you are not born again. You will come back next week, you have not. Until you hear it, is the gospel of salvation. I'm going to show you throughout the whole scriptures in the New Testament. Not this kind of a thing that we are churning out from the pulpit and all of that and uh, from the altar. And then at the end of the day, you make altar call and say, people come and they troop out. Not understanding any single thing at all about what we are talking about. Some are even sleeping. When it is time to make altar calls, their parents or whatever will wake them up. Yo, 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 yo. And then they will rush to the pulpit. And then you are counting it as souls that we are saved. You are deceiving ourselves. It doesn't work that way. Because if it does, we won't be where we are today. So we see, preach will bring about the sowing of the seed. And that sowing of the seed, you must hear what is being said. And when you hear it, you have understanding. And then you believe it. And then that conviction, you are convinced now, you call upon the name of the Lord. You confess the Lordship of Jesus Christ and then you will be saved. Okay. Give me 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 1 to 3. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the word, the gospel which I preached unto you which also you have received and wherein you stand. The gospel I preach to you, you receive it and you are standing now. What kind of gospel is that? By which also you are saved. You see, the gospel of salvation. The gospel that saves. There is a gospel that saves. There is a gospel that does not save. The gospel of prosperity and breakthroughs and open doors. The gospel of deliverance. The gospel of healing and miracles. They don't bring salvation. The one that brings salvation is a gospel of salvation. He said, look at what it is. By which also you are saved. If you keep in memory what I preach unto you, unless you have believed in vain. Verse 3. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received. How? Received from who? Received from Christ. Jesus sat, sat Peter down and he was giving him, he said, Precept upon precept, line upon line. He gave it to him. He didn't receive it from any other person. So that he won't be adulterated and all of that. Pure, direct. The gospel of salvation. And what is it that Paul, he was quoting Christ. Remember he was writing by the inspiration. He was the Holy Spirit that was speaking through him. And he was penning it down in writing. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received. How that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. He died. Why did he die? Did he die for his sins? You must know it. You must know that you are a sinner. And this is the consequences of, where, of your sin. You are going to hell. You are going to face the wrath of God. You have been disconnected and alienated from the life of God. You don't have any life. You are a vagabond. You and I, we are vagabonds. Sold out to sin. Slave to sin and Satan and the devil. By your right. Children of rot. The wrath of God is going to come upon us because of our condition. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which... 
I receive how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. Scriptures is means that which is written, written down, not the one you are hearing from the Holy Ghost. Verse 4. And that he was buried. He died for your sin. He was buried. They didn't come and steal him like they claimed that his disciple came in the night and stole him. So he didn't die. He was not buried. But the Bible says he died and was buried. Buried means that he went to hell to pay for the consequences of your sin. He stayed in that hell for three days and three nights. He who knew no sin was made sin for my sake. That's where I'm supposed to go to. That's where I'm supposed to end my life. When people don't have this understanding and they are coming to church every time and they are praying, some of them are praying, some of them, because they pray for different reasons and all that. They are not saved. And when you say, those of them, you see, if you are saved and you are taught the word of God, and somebody asks you, are you saved? You'll be able to say, yes, by the grace of God, I am saved. Why? How do you mean? Because I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He left heaven, came down here for my sake to seek me that was lost because I was a sinner doomed to eternal damnation. There was nothing good about me. Though he didn't do anything, he was innocent. He was a righteous one. He came and took my place and died to save me from the wrath of God. That I may be saved and be reunited with my father. That's why I'm saved. And that he was buried and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. He rose again from the dead on the third day. Until you hear this, you will not be convicted. You will not believe it. You will not make that confession. And even when you hear it, go. let's see the second one. Matthew chapter 15 verse 10. And he called the multitude and said unto them, Hear and do what? Hear and do what? He didn't say just hear. <laughs> you must hear and you must understand. If you don't understand, go to verse 16 of uh, Matthew 15. Go to verse 16. And Jesus said, Are you also without? You have heard this and you do not understand it. So what is going on? You know why he's asking them? Because they were misbehaving big time. Because all that have been said, they didn't, he couldn't see them. It's just like somebody comes here now and you are speaking Hausa. It's only Yeda that can understand Hausa. And when you finish and all of that, you go home. And maybe in Hausa, he's telling you that um, armed robbers are stealing there and they are killing people and all of that. You heard all those things and you didn't understand what he said. And then you enter your car and you are driving up and you get shot. Because you did not understand anything she was saying. That is what happens with the gospel. You don't speak Greek and Hebrews and all those whatever. Coming to confuse the people. The essence, the bottom line is that when you deliver that message, it must be understood in its simplicity. You don't go there and be speaking big grammar. The essence is to make it as simple as possible so that everybody will be able to you strive and do everything so that they will understand. That is why one of the major prayer you spend your time praying, oh God, grant them understanding that they will have an understanding. Because flesh and blood cannot give it to them. Give me Matthew 13, 14 and 15. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah. We said, by hearing you shall hear and shall not do what? They will hear and they will not understand. Just like you sit in the church, the people will hear the message and they don't understand anything else. And seeing, you shall see. But you will not perceive. You will look and all of that. Confusion, the thing is kept away from you. For these people's heart is wax gross and their ears are dull of hearing and their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart and should be converted. You see where conversion takes place. Until you understand it, the conversion will not take place. That new creation will not happen. That being born again will not happen. 
these are things that are made clear in the scriptures that the duty of the church is not in the preaching you can be saying so many is just to listen if you're able to stand stay with a few and help them to see help them to understand explain is by explanation explaining all this and i'm praying by the help of the holy spirit so that the eyes of the understanding being enlightened so that the light of the glorious gospel which is in the face of jesus christ the light of the gospel the glory of the gospel in the face of jesus christ will shine in their hearts and then they will be saved until that is done we are still going around the circle mark 4 12. i can go on and on and on and on and give you scripture mark 4 12 that seeing they may see and not perceive and hear it, they hear and not understand less at any time they should be converted and their sins should be forgiven them. You see, until this happens, man, you are not born again. John chapter 8, 43. Why do you not understand my speech even because you cannot hear my word? It's understanding everywhere. So seek to understand. Wisdom is a principal thing. In all you're getting, get understanding. If you don't have understanding, it can happen. One of the greatest prayers you pray, if you're interested in winning souls, if you're interested in establishing people for Christ, you must pray the prayer that God will grant them wisdom. Wisdom is applied knowledge. When they know it and understand it, they can do it. That God will grant them the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. And that the eyes of the understanding being enlightened so that they may know. And when you pray and the, the veil is lifted, the wax in their ears are clean, the scales in their eyes fall off, and all of that, wow! Is like a thunderbolt, boom, in their heart. They come alive. You won't send them text message and remind them to come to church. It won't happen. You know why you are texting and sending text messages? There are many of them are not born again. If they are born, if they are born again, if they are saved, you don't need a follow-up. Nobody followed me up when I gave my heart to Christ. And he explained in details what goes on behind the curtain. So you have a grasp of understanding of what. So when you go back, you can reflect on it. Wow. So this is so you know what to do at any time. And with this, you will be able to you will be able to discern. You don't sometimes. So that is why the Bible said, those who through knowledge, who through use, knowledge is knowledge. Knowledge of God's word gives you discernment. That's why when you see people, you'll be able to say, This person is like this. This person is not that God didn't speak to you, it's through the knowledge of God's word. It, the knowledge of God, the more you study the word of God, you have discerning heart. Discernment, there is this discernment that comes through the knowledge of God, through the studying of the word of God. Okay, let me just stop here and give you the final scripture and I close. Acts of Apostles chapter 8 verse 26. It was an Ethiopia eunuch. He was reading the Bible, the scriptures. No understanding. He didn't understand anything he was reading. He was reading the Bible. It didn't make any sense. And so the angel spoke to Philip. He said, go meet him there. And Peter finally go, went, met him. I said, what is it that you are doing? He said, I'm trying to read from Isaiah. I don't understand what he's saying. What's the meaning of the sheep and slaughter? Who is the sheep? Who is slaughtering who? And he rose and went and behold a man of Ethiopia and an Enoch of great authority under Candace Queen of Ethiopia who had the charge of all her treasures and had come to Jerusalem for to worship and was returning and sitting in his chariot to read Isaiah the prophet. Then the spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to his chariot. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, Understandest thou that what thou readest? 
Do you understand what you are reading? Yes. And he said, how can I understand? How can I accept some man should guard me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. And the place of the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter. And like a lamb, dumb found, dumb before, or dumb before his sharer. So open he, open he not his mouth. Yes, and his humiliation, his, his judgment was taken away. And who shall declare his generation for his life is taken from the earth? And did not answer Philip and say, I pray thee of whom speaketh the prophet this, of himself or of some other man. He did not understand. So he couldn't be saved. Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water, and the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth, hinder, what doth hinder me to be baptized, now that he is saved? And Philip said, If thou believest with all thy heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Now that he has explained to him, he understood, and then he believed, and he confessed the Lordship of Jesus Christ, and was baptized, and then was saved. Understanding the gospel. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, this is all about laying or understanding the laying of the foundation for the Christian life or the Christian faith. How you lay that foundation. You lay that foundation precept upon precept, line upon line. First, be born again. And this is how you get born again. The second, get baptized in the Holy Spirit. And this is what happens. And this is the implication of new births. This is an implication of the baptism in the Holy Spirit. The third one is uh, Holy Spirit baptism. And this is the implication. This is what happens. Priest, you know, and all of that. And then you get, part, become a partaker. Not just that you partake once, but you continue. And there are implications and there are benefits and the reasons why Jesus Christ said all that. So these are the things we need to know. So you go back again and make sure that your life is in tandem with this. And then you are good to go. It's actually making sure that your foundation is sure and is solid. So when you begin to build on that, because there are so many other things, not having this, not having done this, that is why Paul said, before, if God permits, unless God permits, if he does not permit us, we cannot go on to maturity. Because the things that do with maturity, that has to do with maturity, you can't take it. You hear people say, when the heat becomes terrific, I have to use plan B. So have plan A and have plan B. So that when the going gets tough, you cannot stand the heat. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter how many years you have been in the whatever. There are those whose name are written in heaven. There are those whose name are not written in heaven. In the Lamb's book of life. There are the, the name of the church of the firstborn, which are, are plural, which are written in heaven. There are those that are not written in heaven. There are those whose candlestick are taken away. Make sure yours is in order. Make sure your own is still shining. Bow down your heads. Father, we thank you. We give you praise and glory for the entrance of your word gives light. is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. We thank you, O God, and we pray that you continue to open up the mysteries of your kingdom, the mysteries of the covenant. You said... That the mysteries of the covenant is with you, but can only be made known to those of them who fear you, who have entered into this covenant relationship with you, according to specification, lay down rules, Lord. And these are the things we are looking at and studying, Lord, in order to fortify and solidify our foundation and our stand with you, Lord, so that we will not be like those seed that fell on 
thorny ground that did not have root, that when the sun come, temptations and trials, they die suddenly. Now, this will not be our portion. That is why we are here, Lord, to ensure that your word will grow and have deep root in us, Lord. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit of our Father. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen and amen. 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 
Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. 
Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen and